What's happening, everyone? We've um, we'll give it a, we give it a minute. Wait, to see if there's a few more people want to join in. Um, I'm just trying to find myself on the laptop or well, on the kids' laptop. Whether it works or not, I don't know. Um, where is me? Yeah, yeah. Bear with me. Free watching. Get in. My phone's around the other way, so I can't see what he's all writing. Hold up. What, like, scare? Get, <laughs> get out! <laughs> Shut the door. Um. Um, what's happening, people? Right, I'm good. Hang on. No, I'm not. Let me just turn the volume down because I can hear myself talking and it's silly. Um, yeah, hardcore fisherman. Um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, it's a pain being stuck indoors, not being out of fish. There's no work. Um, I understand. Obviously, I understand what's going on. In the world and it's not very nice for anyone um but it's it is hard so hard um i've got friends and i've got all sorts of people telling me you can't go fishing and you can't do this and you shouldn't be doing that and you shouldn't be doing this then people that they, they go fishing once a month once every six weeks once every six months i'm out twice a week normally um whether i'm out fishing or pumping or or whatever it's just it's hard to just stay indoors, um, especially with the way the weather's been. Obviously, we've had the last, the last few months. Uh, few, well, yeah, a few months. Just the weather's been shocking, shocking, absolutely shocking. Um, and now it's, it's lovely. What do you do? What What do you do? It's, yeah, it's driving me mad. But yeah, well, I did say I'd come on here. Um, I had a few, um, a few people ask, how do I decide when and where? And why I go fishing on certain days or wherever I'm going. So I'll explain that to you in a bit. Um, just try and talk, get some of these. It was hard work. We only had one each. Um, the Sunday was the better day. Um, they, they seemed to have quite a few more fish. Um, one fellow had two. Um, I can't think of his name now. He had one at three pounds and one three pound three ounces. One at uh, two pound twelve. So absolutely smashed it. Ollie, well, yeah, I'll bring you back, mate. <laughs> but um, anyway, Matt, exactly. You can get on a pack train. It is, it is mad. See, the thing is, where I live, I literally, I can spit in it the River Medway. Um, so for me to go fishing, I don't need to use a car. I can just stick my rods it in a bag. Well, stick my rods in my rod bag, stick the box on my back and walk there. I'll be, I'll, I can walk to the river in, in two or three minutes and I'm fishing. Um, now, a lot of people's um, argument was, oh, you'd have to go in the car and you'd have to go and fill up. Um, hello, Lace. My little girl's watching, brilliant. Um, yes, yeah, so you'd have to go to the petrol station, fill up your car, touching petrol pumps, handing people money and in contact with people. I don't. And there's a lot of people like that. Um, obviously, I'm on a lot of the Facebook groups and... Oh, it's gone mad on there. It's like Michael West mentioned it earlier. It's like it's like warfare, and it is because everyone's just slagging everyone off. No one's got anything better to do rather than sit indoors and just argue and be keyboard warriors. Um, a lot of people, this has gone to their head, and they they think they're above everyone else. But um, yeah, so there's people saying you shouldn't do this, and I think they're just jealous because they physically can't get there that easy, or they haven't got bait. I've got bait. I've got pleaders in the back garden. For Christ's sake, it's so hard. Um, Mate, why not? What happened to your mate Lee? Listen, <laughs> as I'm live, I'll tell you the story. So this is this is this is why I'm doing this video, really. This is why I'm doing this video. So we fish Sheaford, as you've probably all seen the video. Me, Mike, Dan, and who's the other person? Um Rich. Sorry. Sorry, Rich. But yeah, so all four of us fish Sheaford. Now I've been planning that trip for about three days. The wind was northeasterly. Seaford is on the south coast and it faces towards the southwest really because it's just because it's at a funny angle. Um, so the wind is coming from the northeast. If this is Seaford Beach facing the southwest, you can't see. Northwest wind comes from behind you, blows off your back.
as it was north east, it was coming from behind you and blowing from behind. That's another thing. If you're looking on weather forecast or here, someone says, oh, the wind's blowing southerly. It's coming from the south, not blowing to the south. Um, a lot of people don't know that, and I didn't know that until a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, southwesterly, it's coming from the southwest. But anyway, Saturday, it was blowing northeast. So it's blowing off our backs, out to sea. Therefore, flattening the sea, flat calm. Um, the water would have cleared right out because there was no, it wasn't churning up, so there was no sand or no nothing like that. Um, Lacey, stop commenting because you're putting me off, mate. Um, yeah, so the water was nice and clear. Place, four place fishing, they love clear water. Um, all right, I'm not, that's not to say you're not going to catch them in dirty water because they do. But if you're going to fish for place, if I'm going to fish for place, I'm going fishing when the water's clear and the sea's calm. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'd spoken to Mike about this. The weather was spot on for the place, really, for Saturday. Um, and he said he, he'd put a status on Facebook or something. And this Lee fella had commented saying it won't be no good. Um, it's going to be blowing in your face. It's a northeasterly wind. That means it's blowing towards the northeast, which is so it's so so no. So he said it'd be awful. And um, and I just commented saying, Lee, you're mistaken. In maybe not these words, but I just said, Lee, no, it's not like that, mate. It's blowing from from the northeast, not to the northeast. Therefore, it's going to be off your back. And then he kicked off saying, I've been there doing this for 40 years, and I live at Seaford. I practically live on the beach and. Um, I know this and I know that, but actually, no, I don't know anything because I haven't got a YouTube channel. Well, then that sort of pissed me off. Um, so yeah, I was probably a bit of a keyboard warrior, and I told him to come and come and say hello on Saturday. I didn't say come on, mate, let's have it out on the beach. I wasn't, I wasn't a complete helmet. But after he was slagging me off, and it, the comments just kept rolling out from him, um, I just said, "What, right, mate? Look, come, come and see me Saturday. Come, come, like, come and say hello," and then. I said, bring your rod because it's going to be a nice day. And I think that pissed him off. He, he did realise that he was wrong. He did realise that he was, he was wrong because that's why he then kicked off um, and said, said, oh, Will, I'm going to come and kick your head in. And I said, OK, mate, well, you best bring your mates. Um, and apparently he was going to. He said, oh, I won't come alone. So I said, fine, I'll see you Saturday. And he never turned up. Anyway, that's enough about Lee, the helmet. What else have we got on here? Um... No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't right. Tell him to apologise. It's in our face. We were standing on the beach at six o'clock in the morning and it was blowing off our backs. Perfect. Um, there just wasn't any place around. Sunday was the better day. It had been, it cleared out a bit more on the Sunday. It was a bit calmer. Lovely. Um, so yeah, it, it is. It is. Caveman Fisher, are you Lee? <laughs> are you Lee? So yeah, that that was that. Um, <clears throat> What else was I going to talk about? I feel like I've forgotten already. Oh yeah, um, while we're here, while we're here, there's a few of us. How many people are watching? How do I know how many people are watching? Mike West, you best be watching because if you're not, I'll be fuming. Oh, the caveman Fisher. <laughs> I didn't need anyone's help. He didn't turn up. He, mm. he, didn't, he was a proper melt. Mm. Um, I've got loads, I've got people messaging me now, it's a bit strange. Um, oh, 41 watching, that's what I wanted to see. Happy days. Right, so, um, another thing. Any of you on Facebook, um, you see me and Mike West from um, whatever his channel's called nowadays. Sorry, Mike, but you've changed it so many times. Um, I think it's called Michael C. Anglin today. Um, bless his little heart. Um, we do like to take the piss. We do like to have a laugh. But it's all banter. It's all like some people take it too. Some people take it wrong, and some people some people have a laugh. I mean, I, sometimes I take things the wrong way. But yeah, um, so obviously he bangs on about people being sponsored about this and sponsored about that. And I'm not slagging anyone off at all um, on YouTube because I know how hard it is to keep the videos going, um, keep decent content, and just just keep it going. Um, but it just seems like. There's been an array of channels just pop up from nowhere, and they're all sponsored. Every single one of them is sponsored, all by the same people. And it just seems strange. And this, when you're watching the video, there's not actually any fishing going on. It's just buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. And I just think, well, um, BMX Tail T. Um, how am I finding quarantine? How do you think I'm finding quarantine, mate? Same as you. I bet this. T is watching, as you know, it's my brother, and I know he's stuck indoors with our old man. And well, I'd rather be hanging from a tree than being stuck indoors with my old man. It's just, I don't know how it is. 
Um, um, I ain't supposed to know one. little girl standing outside my bedroom door being an absolute pain. Lacey? Yeah? Do one. Dad, let me say something. What, can you, can you say it quietly then? Because I am live. What? Alright, we'll go back in your bedroom and watch it from your bedroom then. Fine. Sorry guys, this is this is the thing we're having kids, isn't it? Um they just won't leave me alone. It's like you know when you're in the bath or in the shower I don't really have baths, I have showers. But nine times out of ten, when it's about seven o'clock in the morning and I'm having my morning turnout, bang, bang, bang on the door. Dad, I need a wee. I've got three girls. Three girls. I've got one eleven, one five and one eight um and every time i need to turn out they need to turn out what why i don't understand i've got two toilets in my house go downstairs no no it's dark downstairs still no one's been down there and turned the lights on yet anyway so there's me saying about the sponsors um and i've just had this turn up from all the way from mississippi in the u.s um it's not everyone's cup of tea and to be honest i never thought it was my cup of tea um, but I was contacted by a lovely bloke called Stephen from uh, from MS Flex, and he makes all the gear for um, like pro bass fishing. You've all seen it, the American bass fishing. Um, massive, massive sport over there. They get paid. Well, some of them bass anglers over there get paid like our footballers over here. Um, well, he got in contact with me and wanted to make me my own well, jersey, if you like. Um, and I, was, I said to him, yeah, that's no, absolutely fine. He just said... Oh, he said he wouldn't mind a little bit of coverage on the channel, which I, I said I'll, I'll happily do for him, no problem at all. Um, absolute diamond of a bloke. He messaged me. Um, he just asked, um, obviously, who am I sponsored by? And obviously, I'm sponsored by Seiko Mike because he's like one of my best pals, and yeah, he does it for me. But he knows that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit on the channel and go, oh, you need to buy these beads, you need to buy this, you need to buy that. If you guys notice, I don't talk about Mike's beads every single time I go fishing. I talk about them when I'm using them. When I'm place fishing, they are the mutts nuts. There's nothing like it on the market. We all used to use black and green normal plastic beads, but now you've got the mixture. Why Why wouldn't you use them? They're the, they're the nuts. Um, and I've proved it twice in the videos. Anyway, this is the outcome of Stephen from MS Flex from US. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, it's all on there, as you can see. It's even got, I'll bring you back down the arm. No, that one's, that one's sea glow on that. Absolutely quality. I hope you can see it. Um, so that's the front. And on the back, we've got Medway Tackle, which is my local tackle shop. And I do a lot for them, they do a lot for me. Um, and in the background, I don't know if, not many people will know this, but you can see, obviously, this is this is a map of the southeast of England, where I live. Um, and then, it's not just a normal map, this is Navionics. So all these little marks on here, if anyone's got the Navionics card, or if anyone's got a boat or knows what they're talking about with Navionics or even got the app on their phone, you can tell this is um, all these little marks here. These are all wrecks and then little contours on the seabed. Oh, it's just brilliant. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, so, yeah, what I'll do is I'll put a link to their uh, to their page on my on my uh, um, 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 on my oh, spit it out, Reese. on my Facebook on the Fish Hunter UK. Also, with that came this. This is the, um, you know, the thing you pull over your head and cover your face up with, so you look like a burglar. Union Jack colours, how it should be, absolutely spot on. I can't thank Stephen enough, and MS Flex. Like I say, he, he made it for me, completely free of charge, sent it out, and he posted it from America. Um, it took, I think it's taken about three or four weeks to get here, mind you, but obviously they're having the same problems as we are, so everything's a bit up in the air. Um, but yeah, I'm just, let me have a little look at these comments, guys. Mate, why not? I will sort out a link. If you look up MS, um, MS Flex on Facebook, go through them. If you uh, give them a message, say you got it, say, say, say Fish Hunter or Reese um, mentioned it, then hopefully it'll be able to sort you out. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's what they can do. Um, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> It does. I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't think um, I don't think I'm wearing it out in a cold winter's night because it's it's cold. But these are made from special material where they they keep you cool in the summer, and I'm sure they've got warmth to them as well. They're like a um, a bit like long johns if you like, but they keep the sun off you as well. So they're UV protection, um, so you don't get sunburnt in the summer. Um, what else we got on here? Um, 
Lacey, I'll see what, mate. You are grounded. You keep commenting, I will take off your tap. Listen, daughter, I will take your phone off you. Listen to. I'm just home, mate. I can't cook. You say about homemade pizza. I can't. I can't. I can't cook. So yeah, I'm, I can do beans on toast, um, and I can do toast on beans. But that's about it. Um, ah, oh, Mark, they're downstairs in my box. I would have done, yeah. Uh, Peter, yes, I have. I have got a boat, and currently in my garden there's a there's a spanking 9.9 four stroke um, Honda engine, and I can't get out and use it. It's driving me mad, driving me mad. Um, she has shown I can make um, cornflake cakes. They're lovely, but yeah, I've got got my boat, um, and I know on all the videos someone's always commenting and asking me to go over to the island on the Medway. So that will be that will be something I'm definitely doing. I'm just gonna get a bit more comfortable here on my bed. Um, I want to take my shore gear over. It sounds silly, but I want to take my shore gear on my boat over to the island and fish off the island. No one lives on it, it's unhabited. There's a great big um war gun turret thing on it. I can't think what it's like, it's like a fault. Um so maybe we even have a little bit of a walk around that one day if anyone's interested. I mean I know I'm a fishing channel but I like to try and do things by the coast, by the sea. Um, yeah, other bits and bobs. I don't like I don't like pizzas. Listen, I know I'm a chunk, right? But I don't eat. I'm so I, I say I don't eat. I do eat. I eat a lot, but mainly bread and chips because I'm so fussy. I know it don't look like it, but yeah, I don't. Um, Oh, Mike, here we are. Where are you coming, son? You mean you're coming out on the boat, going to do a bit of shore fishing? Oh, we're going to. The, the title of the video is Fishing on a Deserted Island because technically we are on a desert island. Although we're not in a desert, it's, there's no one there. No one else lives there. Um, so, yeah. Um, why don't we do this? Well, mate, I did try. The thing is, the, I had so much, got so many ideas this this year of things to do. But then we've had all these storms, Kira and Bill and Ben and Bob and Joe and Nobend. Um, and now obviously we've got this and everyone's saying, oh, it's only three weeks, only three weeks. But guys, I don't think it's going to be, obviously this going on, it, it's not not just going to happen for three weeks and then just it's all gone. We all know it's not going to be gone. Um, for the last God knows how many months, mental health has been shoved down our throats really by social media, the normal media is in on the TV, even in between ad breaks that they've been doing special special bulletins telling everyone to just stop and talk to each other for 30 seconds, just make sure someone's okay. But now all this has come about, it's all stopped. Now there are people out there, like the autistic angler, Martin, he, he, he fishing is his life, he needs that for him to, to go about his daily life. Now to some people, it's not just fishing, whether it be going for a walk up a mountain, or some people like to stay indoors, but some people can't go outside because they're and have to get some fresh air and have to have the peace and quiet and the tranquility of fishing. Um, but no one's no one's remembering about them. No one is no one's thinking about them people at all. Um, and that's the annoying thing. Now everybody's expected to just man the fuck up and get on with life, and it's it ain't that ain't right. That ain't right. You can't you can't keep changing the goalposts. Last week talked about them, and now it don't matter. Just sit indoors. You, they, some people just can't. It is what it is. Um, I think it's only going to get worse. Um, oh yeah, Shane, don't forget Storm Lee. And yeah, this is it. It's just going to get much worse. Much, much worse, I think, for everyone. Um, Matt, man, there's not so many in the southeast that I've seen yet. I think there's been a couple of hounds come off the boat. But yeah, when them hounds are here, I can't wait. I mean, me and Shane last year, to be fair, although he's... Although he's a bit weird and he's from Dover and he's like inbred. Um we had an amazing day on them hands last year off of Celsi. Um I, th I think the biggest I think I had the biggest of sixteen. But Shane had I think Shane done his P B. Um he had Willie dribble when he thought he caught his first Angela and it turned out to be a form back. <laughs> um, oh we had some cracking fish. Mate, why not? Where do I fish for hounds? I fish Reculver off the shore for them, um, down that way, and on my boat again, just off Reculver. I mean, obviously Nate's got his boat; he's got bear hooks, um, and we go out for we go out for them. In fact, last yesterday was 
was was my channel's birthday really although i put a video up about four years ago i've, I've since deleted that now um it was, it was a year yesterday when i've done the first video i was out with nath on bear Rooks. loads and loads of form back i'll probably tell you is now really nath might be a bit pissed off but it is what it is um we was about two and a half miles off the shore of lays down off or off the isle of Shetby. about two and a half miles off we were um it was a big tide big spring tide and it was coming up to low water. We was doing about 15 knots. Now, nice boat is 33 foot Aquastar, twin engines, and I think they're about 155 horsepower each engine. So yeah, we was cruising about 15 knots, um, and all of a sudden, we stopped dead. And it picked me up from the back of the boat, threw me up against the weed house. We run aground, say two, two and a half miles off. Um, and yeah, that was the first day we was making a video. And uh, I'll always remember it, because somewhere in the video, at Nath's dad, who was driving the boat at the time, he, I said, oh yeah, we haven't had nothing for about an hour and a half. And in the background, he said, yeah, why is that, Reese? Because <laughs> at the time, we was trying to keep it a secret, because it was embarrassing. But um, yeah, you know, it was a bad old day. We smashed both the props, both the props, instead of being like that, if you can imagine, they're like that, they was like that time we got back. We had to crawl back in at eight knots, um, and the boat, the, the boat was just vibration. Oh, it was unbelievable. We still stayed out and caught loads and loads of fish. But, um, yeah, we hit this bank and where well, there was about six inches of water on one side, I could see crabs walking past me. I could have walked back to shore, but two and a half miles off. Who would have, who would have thought? Who would have thought? It didn't show up on the Navionics or nothing. It was very, very strange. Um, just lucky enough, we was all good. Um, mate, why not? This hoodie is from um, Medway Tackle. Um, I think, yeah, I'm sure this is not going to take one. Listen, boys, I'll take, look, look, I'll take it off, but look at my nut. Someone forgot to go up the edges just before this all came. That's why I got mewed up. That's the way it's staying. Yeah, this is a, this is a, um, this one's from Medway Tackle. They had it made for me. Um, but yeah, no, I, I will look into getting them. It's, it's just, have I got, have I got the patience to wait around and, and get them done? Probably not. So what I'd say is if you wanted them done, then I, I'd be quite happy for you to use my logo. And if you, find a t-shirt printing company or a jumper printing company do them yourself my black one i've got cost me 30 quid um so for me to for me to want to get them and sell them to people i'd want to be making a few quid for doing it and 30 who wants to pay 40 quid for a jumper no one um so yeah if you want to use my logo it's on youtube it's Caveman Fisher, where can you get an engine? Um, marketplace, mate, to be fair. Facebook, eBay, there's there's loads of places you can get them. Obviously, this time, at the, what's, what's going on at the minute, you're going to struggle getting anything um, because people don't want you to go in your house. And really, we should only be going out for essentials. Now, to me, going fishing is essential, but in the eyes of the government, in the eyes of the snowflakes all over the world, it's not essential, um, apparently. But, yeah. Um, Peter, I've got to say, mate, thank you so much for the offer. But rays to me are like flat dogfish at the minute. There's been so many of them. I wouldn't mind a few undulates or some small lights or some spotties, something I've never caught. I've had I've had a few undulates, but not many. Um, I just don't want fullbacks. Um, and black bream, I, I'm going to sound really ungrateful, but they, they they bore me a little bit because they're just oh, they're small fish. Oh look, big fish. Um, <laughs> I know they fight well in light gear, and yeah, I know they do, but yeah. I'd love to come down to Little Hampton though and have a go. Um, Wayne, when is the best time to go out collecting peelers? Now, but not now, because we're under lockdown and we're not supposed to. Um, but they normally, for the last 10 years I've been going, they normally start mid-March, beginning of April, depending on what weather we get. Like we've had a few warm days, now they've been peeling in absolute holes. Now me, T and Louie went out, uh, what day we go out? Monday, lockdown day. We literally, we got home and he said, no, we're not allowed out. So I've got a video to upload. It's me, Louie and T just pissing about down the beach trying to find crabs um, that didn't really go to plan. Um, but And that's because the North Easterlies, because the Isle of Sheppey faces the North, faces North East. Well, it doesn't, it faces North. No, it does face North East. With a northeasterly blowing, it blows onshore at Sheppey, whereas at Seaford it blows offshore. Um, 
it, it's called the water right down, which is put the peelers off. So they're going to be, they will be about, but when the wind turns and goes the other way, um, and gets a bit warmer. Um, but yeah, any time now, you'll be able to pick up a few, enough to go fishing anyway. Um, when they're in, in, middle of April, where I go, where I've got not so many traps, but when they're at their absolute peak. So before then, you'll be going and picking up 100, maybe 150, maybe 200 if you're lucky. Then all of a sudden, you'll just get an absolute spike in it. And yeah, and I'll fill two buckets. I've been, yeah, 800 would be my best. Um, just over 800, I think about 815. Um, but yeah, what can you do with all them crabs? That's where Medway Tackle come in. They buy them. <laughs> Um, but obviously with what's going on, it, it just can't happen at the minute. So the crabs are safe. I've got about 40 in my garden that I'm waiting to pop and I shall just, I shall freeze them down. Um, I've still got probably 200 crabs in the freezer from last year. Um, where I froze them, hoping that the cod were going to turn up and they didn't turn up. And like me and Louis, well, to get my cod this year, I had to travel to Liverpool. Um, oh, it was well worth it, but yeah, it was a long old, long old guy. Paige, why are you watching? Now I've got my wife watching. That's just unbelievable. You shouldn't be watching. Watch East Stendhal's the same. Um, yeah, bye, lad. <coughs> Caveman Fisher, what is my favourite fish to catch? Cod. And the reason it's my favourite, the cod that fight like shit, they just thump and nod. Hounds are by far so much more fun, but hounds, you can get them easier. And cod are just harder to catch so again they're just my favorite fish if i catch a hound that big or a cod that big i'm taking the cod over the hounds because i know i can get more hounds um and the cod are well they're unicorns aren't they <laughs> we call them unicorns down here um mark uh yes i do sell the peelers mate um just when i've got them um and at the minute i haven't and i wouldn't i can't it's it's not right to be selling them, not when the tackle shops are closed. I've got to think here, and uh, and everyone else has got to think. There's people that sell bait on Facebook, and I and I'll do it because I go pumping, and I'll get. If I'm going down, it's costing me twenty quid in diesel, and I'm out all night pumping or all day pumping. So if I go and pump three hundred, then I'm selling at least eighty to get my diesel money back. Um, because why should I have to pay for my diesel, and and do all the work? If I can sell eighty and get my diesel money back, happy days. Same with the crabs. Now, all right, when the crabs are peeling, last year I went to Spain. Me and my wife and my three kids went to Spain for 10 days with peeler crab money. Um, because it was a good year. It, was, it really was a good year. Um, but that was thanks to, to tackle shops like Medway. Big lumps of like 100 crab at a time. I've, I'm not waiting in for people to come around and have 10 crabs for, for a fiver off me. It's just not worth my time waiting in. But um, yeah, without them tackle shops, it wouldn't have happened. So I'm not, even e even if I did manage to get out and go and, have a bit of time by the river and go and pick up a few crab. I wouldn't be selling them because it's not fair on the tackle shops that are about to close because of what's going on. Um, Lewis and Lewis in the Medway Tackle and his dad Mick, uh, well, I value them as friends really, um, and they look after me and I do my best to look after them. So it's just one of them things. Um, what else are we talking about, boys and girls? Um, anyway, the, the, where and when I go shore fishing, which is the title to this video. Um, it started off back in the day, going back to the cod and Dungeness. Cod, that was that was a long time ago. Um, Dungeness is prolific, was prolific for the cod, and it always was after a big southwesterly blow. Now Dungeness Point, obviously, is a point, and it's like that. So you've got this side that faces the southwest, and then you've got this side that faces south. Well, I suppose it faces, doesn't face the southeast, but the, the the points on the southerly point. So when that's blowing southwesterly, it's battering, battering this side, absolutely battering it. And all the other beaches like Camber Sands, Wind Chelsea, where the tide goes right out. Um, and I don't, you all saw the shellfish video, um, and it was because of the big southwesterly storms that we had. Absolutely, it churns it all up. All that food washes up. It hits Dungeness and goes round the point. Now that's when the cod used to be caught when that bait was washing out on the beach because they'd be sitting in the gutter at the bottom, right at the bottom of that beach, and they'd be smashing absolutely smashing that shellfish and living off that as well as the black lug um so dungeness if you want to fish there for a cod or a bass because there's some big bass still caught up there um cheers caveman um yeah there's there's still some big bass caught up there and there was there's still the odd codling caught off of dungeness beach every now and again obviously in the winter time um 
big, big southwesterly blow. I don't mean 20 mile an hour. I mean 50, 60, 70 mile an hour. A big proper storm like what we had. The bait would be washing up on the beach. And then give it a day or so after. So what you want it to do really is go southwesterly. So the waves are big, massive, in your face. And then have it turn and go northerly. So then it's now blowing off your back, flattening the sea, make it comfortable to fish. But that bait will still be in the water, still churning up, still washing up on the beach. So it's blowing offshore, wherever it may be in the country. Um, it doesn't always apply, obviously, to the south coast, because some of you live up north and it's fishing on the east coast. You want easterly winds to make it dirty, whereas fishing down here, you want northerly winds on the south coast, northerly winds, whether it be northeast or northwest, whatever, northerly winds will clear out the south coast. Um, on the east coast, Norfolk, Newcastle, the Humber, all up there, Northumberland, they all get um, they all get some lovely cod right up north, Newcastle way. Um, I'm not an expert up there because obviously I don't live up there, but they all love a good sea running. So they they say all this, you see the post on Facebook, the sea's running, so the wind is must be blowing easterly because it must be blowing onshore. If you're on the east coast, the wind's blowing onshore, mm -hmm. kicking the sea up, um, which is obviously what you want. Makes the water dirty, makes it really really run hard the cod will like it um they come in to see what food has been sucked out of the ground washed off the rocks whatever all fish do the same um but obviously that applies with white and nuisance fish dogfish too um and then they fish for it they don't like fishing when it's flat calm and clear because there's nothing up there for them um but then if you're on the west coast like liverpool um and the, and and that sort of and whales i suppose um again i'm not an expert because i don't live there but the way I would see it is if I was going to go fishing for something like cod, I'd want an onshore wind. So if you're on the west coast, you want it blowing. Oh, I'm confusing myself now. You want it blowing from the west. So yeah, you want it blowing westerly from the west, onshore, make it dirty, then go fishing. Um, things like cod like dirty water. Rays don't mind dirty water, but they like it calm. Fishing off the island, Sheppey, when we go ray fishing, um, it's no good blowing an easterly there because it's rough. They like it nice and calm. And another thing with rays, they tend to, they tip, the, the, the big numbers of rays get caught normally over the island anyway, on the smaller tides. So the water doesn't go out that far on the smaller tides. So they're just sort of sitting there waiting around. Um, I can't think what else really. Smooth hands, I'm not really sure with the smooth hands. Do they like it rough? Do they? I've always caught them on calm, but to be fair, they're a summer fish. So if it's rough, I don't tend to go. Um, I've always caught my hands in nice water. They, I suppose, to be fair, they like clear water. Um, Celsius is always quite clear when we go down there off the boat. So, and fishing at Recolver is normally nice and flat calm as well. Yeah. Get into it. Peter, the taupe this year, guys, the taupe is my target. Um, Mark, what tops, mate? The top I'm wearing, I, I, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back over that. Um, with the tops. Um, oh, my God. I'm, I've lost myself here trying to read the comments. So, yes, a few people here have mentioned taupe. Taupe this year is my target. Shore, boat, whatever. Um, now, to be honest, the only thing I know about taupe is you need fresh mackerel. If you haven't got fresh mackerel, don't bother. Now, is that true or is that not? Turbot, again, another target. Um, there was one off Ramsgate Pier the other day, last week, two and a half pound. Took a live whitehead, apparently. That's unbelievable. Never never heard nothing like it. Um, I've been fishing twice. I've seen one turbot caught at Celsi, very small. And I've seen one turbot caught off of a Bournemouth beach. Again, small. I would have taken it. My two targets are turbot and taupe. Now, I know Dan from Inglorious Fishing is an absolute legend with the taupe, uh, with the turbot, sorry. He goes fishing on his boat in Glorious and he smashes them, like dustbin lids, every single one of them. Um, and then and then he goes, oh, I wish I could come over there and catch some of your little place. You keep your turbots, Dan, you're mad. Um, well, hold on, because the, the comments are getting away from me now. Trying to keep up, boys, trying to keep up. Um, Um, 
Stephen Wood, can we go fishing? Do you think if we're on our own empty beach, as our health? Listen, mate, I've said exactly the same thing. Like I've said, you probably missed the start of the video. I live a four minute walk from the river. I can go, I can walk there. I ain't got to go and get no deeds with my car and touch people and see people. I can walk there with my rods by myself. No one will see me, no one will know. Um, but apparently, no, it's the wrong thing to do. Um, but you can still go to Tesco's and queue up with 500 other people buying your biscuits and your cat food. Like, it's it's ridiculous, mate. But it is, listen, it's, it's at the minute, the way the world is, there's people out there dying. Um, men, women and children, elderly, young, it, it's, it is all if you're allowed, If I'm allowed to go out there and have a bike ride with the kids or have a walk with a dog, what's the difference between stopping and standing still in one place for an hour and having a few casts? Listen, it's up to you guys. Um, oh, I'm not going to advise yes or no. Um, I'm going to let you decide what you want to do. <laughs> um, right, who's next? Right, yeah, Michael C. Anglin. Mr. Mike West from Seagull Tackle. What we're going to do, anyone that's wanting hoodies, we will get them made up and we will get them up for sale on Seaglow's website. So we will get them. Um, and yeah, we'll sort it all out. Um, it's not just obviously, I don't know if, if there's anyone watching, but I've also had this made too. This has been sent to me by MS Flex. Absolute legend, Stephen. Um, this man makes these for the pro bass fishermen over in America. Um, and they're driving around in underground boats, catching bass, earning loads of money. Um, he's up. <clears throat> hmm. So I heard someone outside of my garden. Um, well, what else we got? Um, Mark, no, it's not long. It's not necessarily long distance for smooth hands at all. Places like Selsey, Bracklesham Bay, which is next to Selsey, it's the same beach, but it's just, I suppose there's a part in the middle. Um, at low water, you can walk out. If you've got a pair of waders, you can walk out 50 or 60 yards and only be up to your knees. Um, and cast out, but no, I mean, I think even Michael West has caught him off the shore and he can't cast for shit. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. But yeah, no, they're not out that far. They're, they're, they're not. They can be underneath your feet. Um, and to be honest, when you throw them back, when you're fishing on the shore, if you've never caught one and you throw back a smooth hand, half the time it tries to swim back up the beach. They, don't, they get lost, they don't know where they're going. Um, but yeah, no, they are, they're good fun. Um, Matt Man. Can't see your comment. Hold on, hold on. No worries, Mark. Well, I've I've lost it now. I've gone. Matt, man, for the turbot, I'll mate. I will PM you. Definitely PM you. Um. And of course, you were broadcasting away. Um. Yeah, other than that, boys, I, I don't really know. Um, <coughs> phone's going off its head. I don't really know what else to say. Um, apart from just everyone stay safe. Um, I've got a lot to say. I've got another video to put up of me and the, me and the two brothers mucking about the other day. Um, I'll probably put that up tomorrow night. But it's who knows when there's going to be any more content. Who knows when I'm going to be able to get out fishing. It might just be me talking to you in my bedroom, talking shit for the next couple of weeks. Um, Shane, Turbot, Stinger and Topa are my targets. You'll be lucky with a white and a flat dogfish, son. Roger Slater, we're not, we haven't, um, we haven't done a price. I, I don't really get a made. This one was made, for, this one was made by Medway Tackle for me. Um, they, they, they got it printed for me. It, on the back, it's got Medway Tackle written on it. Um, <laughs> Shane, you're a sloth. Go climb a tree. <laughs> Oh, boys, don't start me off. Um, I'll take a dog any day. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> I've heard what you'll take. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, what's everyone else up to then in this quarantine? What, what are you all doing to pass the time? Because, I mean, so far, I've started ripping up my patio in my garden and started relaying it again in, in a different formation. Um... I've built the missus a flower bed. I've tidied both my sheds. Um, what did I do today? 
Today I want to cut a hedge and cut some grass. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else. Day two and I'm already out of ideas. I'm now sitting here talking, I'm sitting on my bed talking to you lot. Um, yeah, other than that, it's a bit things. After the Grand, Matt Man, after the Grand Slam. Spotty, Small Eye, Blondie, Undy and Sting all in one year. Matt Man, good luck. I hope you do it. Mate, why not? Going to go mental. Sorted fishing gear out three times. Made enough rigs for the... Well, send me some because I like making rigs. It does my nothing. Um, the people that watch the channels, mine and my ex and whoever, live all over the country. In, in fact, all over the world. Um, but if we could do something on the south coast, I don't know, on a big beach. Like, sort of, for instance, Seaford, because it's big, it's easy to park and have a big meet-up. We what a, what a laugh! What a laugh we could have! It'd be a, it, oh, it'd be brilliant. Um, hardcore fisherman, mate. That sounds savage. Stephen would yeah, no, it'd be a good laugh, mate. It definitely would be a good laugh. Um, and oh, what was that, Mike? Free free seago beats for everyone. Well, there you go, boys. You can't beat that, can you? Um, what else is happening? What else is happening? Cling your head talks. Well, do you know what? My plan was for tomorrow. I've got. I've actually got something to do tomorrow now. But my plan was for tomorrow. I've got an old hammer indoors down in the shed that I found, and it's it's got like a it's got an axe head on it, and it's like a flat flat sided one. Um, and I was going to get it out, stick it in the vice and grind it up and make it all shiny again because at the minute it's gone rusty. Um, I'm that bored, I was going to clean my hammer. What else What else do men do in a time like this? Um, yeah, Mark, that's a good idea, getting bait and things like that ready. Um, I can't have it sitting around me because I'll have to go and use it, that's the problem. That's why I'm glad I've only got 20 odd crabs and not 200 because I'd have to be naughty and go and use them. I, I, I wouldn't be able to help myself. Um, 20 I can peel and put in the freezer, but 200, no. Nah, it's not going to happen. I'd have to go and find some flanders or something with it. Um, or some bass or some unicorns or something. Um, I can't. It's horrible. Stephen Wood, yes, I did find my knife that Bob gave to me. So Bob was um, Bob was an old fellow. When I met my missus years ago when I was a kid, um, I started going to her mum and dad's, to the working men's club her mum and dad go to. And there was this miserable old git who used to sit in the corner, um, Bob. And he was a miserable old git um, for the first probably three years I was going in there. That, and then one day he, he said something to me about fishing and we got chatting um, and, and that was it, to be fair. Um, we used to we fished most weekends together. At, by at then at that time I couldn't drive, so I would I'll get on my push bike during the week after work whatever I was doing, go and dig some bait from down the river, and Bob used to drive. I used to do the bait. Bob used to do the diesel, and he used to take me all over the place. Now, um, in the end, Bob was like, well, he was like a granddad. I, I loved him like he was my granddad, um, and I miss him every single day. Never ever feel, never I'll never forget about him. Never. Um, and he had em he had emphysema, wouldn't give up the smoking. Um, he was just, oh, I don't know, he was a contagious old git, but he was an absolute legend to me. Um, but anyway, so we used to go fishing all the time. He didn't really, he wasn't a great angler. He wasn't, his gear was very, very basic. Um, but it got him out and it got him doing what he loved doing. Um, anyway, his knife. It's from Smithfield's Meat Market. He was a lorry driver years and years ago. And he said he was delivering meat one day to the market. And he, he just happened to see this knife. So he pinched it, stuck it in his pocket and away he went. Um, and he, he he'd sharpened it and sharpened it. And he's, there's loads and loads. There's years left in it. Absolute years left in it. But anyway, I love this knife. Every time we went, I'd always nick it out of his box and go, listen, you old git, when you die, make sure you leave me this knife. Um, and well, he, he, he did. Um, the missus was out one night. And uh, I got a phone call from the same woman that introduced to Sam Reese. Have you spoke to Bob the last couple of days? I said, no. 
No, I haven't. See, well, I'm trying to get in his flat, but the key's on the inside, and I can't. There's, I can't get in. Of course, I started in, instantly. I started worrying, but then on the way running up to his house, I thought, no, it, 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 there, there won't be nothing wrong. It's just being stupid. Well, I'm banging and kicking and screaming at the door uh, in his, uh, his old flat, um, and the neighbours, no one had seen him all day. Um, so I shot round to our working men's club. They had a ladder, a big double ladder. Uh, by the time I got back with the ladder, the police had arrived. Linda had rung the police. Um, and yeah, they climbed up, for, up because he was on the second floor flat. They climbed up through his window. Um, they wouldn't let me go. Um, we was waiting outside and yeah, they come out and told us that he'd passed away. Um, it wasn't until a few weeks later, Linda, had, had basically she, she was looking after him by then. Um, and she had... She had his will, and two weeks before he died, the silly old git. So I got, I think, about 300 quid from the insurance company. Um, but because of that, also, he had a granny buggy, you know, the old electric scooter. So I ended up, they ended up sort of letting me have that as well. Um, and it bought my wedding ring, as it goes. This one, because um, I was getting married a few months later. Um, and yeah, it paid. It paid for that. So with all Bob's fishing gear, a, a lot of it I gave away. Um, to like my little brothers and things like that and let them use it and but the only thing I ever kept was a knife so for me to lose that the other week or thought I'd lost that it was it was a big thing um, but luckily enough it was in it was indoors in the garden I'd been using it for something non-fishing I suppose like I normally do um, then I forgot to put it back in the tackle box so that was a touch massive touch um, right what's next yeah, I was pissed, mate. I was massively pissed. Um, but yeah. Mate, you can't... They're, they're brilliant. Get get all you can out of him. Try, try, try and be sponsored by Mike. <laughs> Never hear you, mate. Thanks, Mark. Twiz for Mark, give Twiz a shout out, mate. It, it's 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 awful. It is it is horrible. I, I remember. Do you know what? When I got that phone call um, from Linda to say that, oh, you, you you need to come to Bob's and pick up your stuff because he's left you this and he's left you that. I was, where was I? Was at work. Um, I was helping out with an extension actually. Yeah, and it it done me. It it, well, it wrecked me for the rest of the day. That I couldn't really. I was pretty useless to be. I'm pretty useless anyway. But for the rest of that day, I was properly useless. Um, yeah, it done me. And even now, I still think about him. Like I say, it, it, I loved him like he was a granddad. Um, and at his funeral, um, obviously he'd he he'd, he'd had time to write out what he wanted. So he didn't really have any other family around him. He'd fallen out of his with his ex-wife. Um, he had kids, but. They hadn't bothered with him for years. Whether it was Bob's fault or their fault, I don't know. But that wasn't for me to decide. No one decided to turn up, um, really. It was just me, Linda, and my family. Um, and I've got to say massive thanks to my wife, really, to getting me through it, because it, it done me. Good luck with your rigs. I hate making rigs. Um, no worries, Mark. No worries at all, mate. I don't know what else is going on here. 30 people watching. I feel... Like a celebrity. Um, what else is going on? How long have we been going for? Mike, how do I find out how long I've been going for? Does it say? No. Fifty minutes? As if there's 30, 20, or like 28 people watching me now talk about shit for 30 minutes. Mark, what do I think about... Oh, I've just clicked on something now. What have I done? Hang on. Mate, listen. What do I think about Liverpool? We should be Premier League champions by now. It's... Um... Yeah. That's quite emotional, if I'm honest. What can you do? What can you do? Let me just get back on this chat, because I've lost myself. I've pushed the button being a tit. I don't know what I've done. Now it's loading. Um, I'm probably going to shoot off in a minute, boys, because uh, I need a bath, well, shower, and I'm getting up, sitting upstairs, we've moved up, because my nut needs cutting. Um, oh, hold on, loads more comments now, loads more comments. 
do go bass fishing. I do lure fishing for my bat. Roger, I don't, mate. I don't. Um, I don't do lure fishing because I don't know how. Because all lures are different from what I know, what I think. The, the, I don't know how to work them. I, I'm much same as boat fishing, where people go, I want to go wrecking, and they put on a big perk and a few eyes, and they're standing there all day doing this on the side of a boat. Not me. I'd rather stick on a whole squid, bang it out up tide and leave it there and wait for a bite because there's nothing better than a rod tip sitting in the tide, bent like that, and then you get a bite and it goes up, drop slack, like it does on a boat or like cod do. There's nothing better. Um, I prefer a slack line bite than, than, a, than a hound running off from a rod. I don't know why, I just do. Um, so no, it's something I want to get into though, the, the lure bass fishing. But for me in the southeast, it's hard because the, the water's always dirty. I know they do a lot of it down in Fanet. Um, Margate, Ramsgate Way, Birchington. I don't know the actual beaches or where the secret spots are. I, mean, I never really bothered with, but I do want to get into it. Um, 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 um. Mark, yeah, I do love a footy status. Listen, I, I, one of my good mates from school, <laughs> Luke, I've blocked him. I ain't spoke to him for six, no, maybe not six months, probably four months. The last time I spoke to him was when Liverpool won the World Club World Cup Club competition and we become world champions. Because we was cheated that night. We still won just, but we were cheated that night. And then him being a scummy Man United fan, don't even get me started on him. He said we cheated. I was fuming, so I blocked him. I've never spoken to him since. I'm quite stubborn like that. I had around my dad. How old was Lacey? Eleven years ago. I had around my dad eleven years ago. Um silly really. That was the last time I spoke to him. But that, I'm that stubborn. My actual dad, I ain't spoke to him in 11 years. Um, <laughs> do you want plastic scarcer too? Listen, I ain't no plastic. Never a plastic scarcer. Um, do you know, when I got married, You'll Never Walk Alone was my first dance. That's how much of a of a true Liverpool fan I am. I, I'd love to hear from a West Ham fan that, that's had Arm Forever Bland Bubbles as their first dance. Not happening. Not happening. Um, all right, the only thing for my wedding that I got to um, that I got to decide, but I had it. Um, we was only up there a few weeks ago. Um, Chaz and Dave probably did. <laughs> yeah, I bet they did. <clears throat> I bet they did. Again, we're back going back to the bass fishing. You must have seen the live bait video from down the Medway. That was just a one-off, and that was a that was a that was an it and hope. Um, Shane, Mr. Sloth from Dover, he knows a thing or two about live baiting. Um, he had a few this year, off of I don't know somewhere down near Hive, I think. Um, he wouldn't, in fact, as that much of a mate, he didn't even tell me where he got him. Um, but yeah, I do, I, yeah, I do like a bit of bassing, um, but I prefer catching them on peeler crabs or. Worms, because I, I like bait fishing. Just, it's just how it is. Um, Scott Harris, what's happening, son? I'll get them and I'll lose them. I'll get them and then I'll lose them. Yeah, mate, getting there, bearing up after being stuck in doors. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that, Mark. Shane, you're going to show me how to catch them. What are you going to show me how to catch? Flat dogfish. <coughs> oh, best not cough. Don't be thinking I've got corona. Um, what else we got? Just noticed how plain my bedroom looks. Ladies, Matt, we'll speak to you soon, mate. Thanks for the support. Right, yeah, to be fair, guys, that's probably me and all. Why is my wife still watching me talk? Woman, to do something useful. Surely there's washing up or something to be done. Right, I'm off. See you all later. Um, 
Thanks again for watching. Mark, I just turn it off. <laughs> I'm looking to do it on my finger, innit? But it's on here. Peace out.